Hey guys, Kev here, and I want to do my full review on the Wii Knives Roxy 3. So I've had this guy now for uh, over a month, I think at least. Um, and I was not reviewing it quickly because I really, really like this knife and I wanted to keep carrying it. Um, and then I got Corona and I'm looks like I'm coming out of that. Um, finally, it's been um, over a week, week and a half pretty much at this point. And that thing was kicking my ass for a while. I think I'm starting to get a handle on it. <laughs> Um, so hopefully that's getting better and better from here on out. So, uh, apologies for any videos, um, uh, where I'm sick or complaining about it or like this, where I'm talking about it. I hate to, uh, be negative or whatever, but it's just what's going on in my life and I can't really, uh, help it. I have not been pumping videos out. Luckily I had enough backdated that it got me till, um, hopefully I can start ramping up again. Uh, we'll see. There might be a little bit of a gap. Um, but anyway, I got this knife and I had been hunting for this knife for literally months since Blade Show 2021 in Atlanta. Uh, I went with my good buddy, my brother Kyle, D2M Knives and Gear, and, um, this was the one knife at the Wii table that actually stood out to me. And I tried to get the prototype, but they changed how they were selling them or whatever. And I, I didn't end up getting one. Um, and then I tried to get one early at another show and I just couldn't figure out a way to get one. And I eventually got one through White Mountain Knives. So if they do have a restock, uh, go check out White Mountain Knives. You can use my code LEFTY10, L-E-F-T-Y 10 for 10% off and free shipping in the United States. Um, but this knife comes in at, I think, $238 in this tiger stripe configuration. Uh, you can also get it in a stone wash. They call this stone wash, but to me, it's a bead blast. Um, it's stone washed S35VN and then this tiger stripe flamed anno, basically. Uh, it's titanium scales and then like bronze or gold hardware. You can also get it in a stone washed, stone wash, so fully stone washed knife and i believe that one has i think they all have this hardware uh and then there's a blacked out one so there's one with black hardware or sorry black scales and black blade and then the same uh hardware they all um they all have that hardware and then two of them have stone wash and one has the black uh dlc i think it's like a black wash though so it is stone washed afterwards which is good um so anyway Getting into it, aesthetically, I think it's extremely sexy. It's just one of those knives that stands out to me. I love a sheep's foot blade, and I think that's kind of what's going on here. It's like a worn sheep's foot, and that right now is just very um, aesthetically pleasing to my eye, uh, and that's just kind of how it is. I'm just loving that type of blade. Uh, it does have this kind of interesting sort of hump right here with these three holes. Um, you know, you could take it or leave it. I think a lot of people would like just if it was straight back, maybe. Um, but, you know, I, I, I like the look of it overall. I think Todd Knife and Tool, uh, that's who um, designed this. This is a Todd Knife and Tool design. It's a collab, so it's a um, licensed design to Wii. It's not an OEM project by Wii. Um, but yeah, so aesthetically, I think it's good. Ergonomically, uh, it's fantastic. I mean, this choil right here is just money. Like, you could hold it back here if you wanted to, and the way they designed this handle to kind of ramp back like this uh, on an angle makes it to where I can kind of put my pinky on that. But I've never held this knife like this. Always hold it choked up like this. Um, and then my finger lands, my thumb, sorry, lands up here past the jimping. I've uh, seen some channels uh, have issues with this jimping where when they're bearing down on the knife to do like hard cuts through stuff, um, they're, they're really getting you know, their thumb jacked up on this jimping. Um, I haven't had that problem because I land up here. Uh, I also haven't had that problem because I don't do a lot of hard use. So I haven't been like really bearing down. But if I did, I'd be fine because I'm on that 
on that uh, ungymped area right there. Um, so for me, that works perfectly. I can back up onto that jimping if I want to. Um, and I don't know if that's more controlled or less. It's kind of just, you know, a thumb placement thing. Um, but I, I've had no issues with that. Um, the edge on this has been very good. Uh, the S35 has done very well. Um, I wish maybe they had gone with uh, 20 CV. Is that just lint? Yeah, it's just lint. Um, I wish maybe they'd gone with 20 CV at this price point. I mean, $240. Uh, I think they're $228 for the ones without the Tiger Stripe Anno. Um, it's a bit much for, for S35VN, if, if you ask me. Uh, Wee Knife can do better than that. But, guys, the, the, they're kind of riding their popularity now, if you haven't noticed. Um it's not like they're pumping out the send cut models anymore. I've seen a couple, but like that's their budget stuff now, right? That's what you used to pay for like a Civivi. Now they're coming out with all these Civivis that cost 80 bucks, 80, 90 dollars. Um, that's not, you know, that's still budget for me under a hundred, but like they're starting to creep. Um, they're no longer like the value king out there. It used to be just you could buy any Civivi for 50 bucks and it was probably a good deal. But you'd end up with D2, 9CR, whatever. Now they're bumping it up to 14C and 10CR and um, whatever, whatever else, Nitro V, and they're charging more. Um, and people are buying it. So I guess it's fine, but it's giving them kind of like the freedom to jack their prices up. And I'm not the biggest fan of that, right? Um, I've seen some ridiculous Wii products the last couple weeks. They have an Elementum frame lock. It's a titanium frame lock Elementum coming out. But it's Wii branded now. Instead of a Civivi Elementum, it's a Wii Elementum. And it's like $560 or something like that. So I hit, I hit the... I hit the uh, assistant button. Um, it's like 560 fucking dollars for this Wii. Elemento. Like, go fuck yourself. Seriously. Um, and then I've seen like that new, they have that new one, the Snick or something. And they have a version of that with, it, it just, it had some D Damascus on the scales and a Damascus steel blade. It might not even be Damascus steel. It might just be Damascus blade. And that thing's like 500 bucks. Like, I, I don't know what they're smoking over there. But uh, they're high on all the praise. And, and that's what happens, you know. You, people buy your shit and they go nuts over your shit. You're going to start making crazy expensive stuff because you have a customer base. I get it. I'm, like, I'm not saying I don't get it from a business standpoint. It's just kind of sad because they were like the kings of the good budget knife, you know. You could get a Civivi Ortis for 40 bucks, and that was a hell of a deal, you know. But now it's send cut and they barely work on send cut. Uh, and they're pumping out those $80, $90 models. Not everybody can buy those, you know? Um, for me, it's not a big deal because I don't buy much of their stuff to begin with. But no, uh, I kind of wanted to note that randomly in this review for this knife, Kev. You're reviewing this knife, you fucking idiot. All right. So anyway, uh, the blade is fantastic. I really like it. It's not super thin or anything, but it comes down to a good edge because you essentially have... I mean, you don't have a full flat grind, but it starts here, and it comes down to a good edge, I think. I've had no issues with it. The tip is very good for cutting into shipping labels, which is what I do a lot. So this type of blade shape works fantastically for that. Um, yeah, I've been impressed with it. I haven't needed to sharpen it or anything. You guys know me. If you want a hard-use review, please go watch Stas's review. Watch uh, Neve's Knives review. Um uh, EDC gear reviews has a video on this knife. Uh, he wasn't the biggest fan, um, but he did some cutting in that. So watch that if you want that type of feedback. Okay. Um, let's talk about carry. So this clip, I really like this clip because of how long it is. So it helps me in terms of action as a lefty. I rest on that clip which is very important. Um, in terms of function as a clip, I think it works great. I do have to kind of like sort of finagle it into pocket 
Now I do, I carry this knife in my back left pocket a lot because it's right-handed and I'm left-handed. So it makes sense for me to carry back left. That way I can use my left hand to pull out the knife. So I do that a lot with righty knives. It's kind of been my trick to being able to carry all these righty knives. Uh, if anybody's curious how a lefty carries a ton of righty knives, I do not carry them in my front left pocket. Um, after the burger incident of 2021, I no longer do that. It's not worth it, regardless of the knife. Um, so anyway, um, it, 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 you know, it takes a little bit to get in. I imagine if I was doing it like this, going into my right front pocket, I would have no issue. Uh, it's just that I'm doing it blind behind my back, sort of trying to tuck it in. I got to get the angle. And so it just takes a second to pop in. It's not a big deal. Uh, but I did want to mention it. Um, the clip rides very well. I don't think it sticks out too much. You have about that much sticking out, which is pretty average for a knife, and it doesn't bug me at all. I like deep carry. I love deep carry, but I don't have to have it. Um, what else? Uh, the retention's really good. It hasn't slipped or slid or anything like that. Um, it's not pokey, even though it looks like it has a little bit of a sharp end here. It's not pokey in any way. Um, it catches really good on your finger like that, which is, I guess, dumb. There's no need to do that. But you have good access to pull it out. So very much enjoyed that. Uh, the sounds on this knife, guys, are incredible. So I don't know how much of that comes across, but when it deploys, it has this very nice thwack, thwack to it. And I think it's just the way that these scales uh, are cut with the holes in it, in the places they are, it just adds acoustic somehow. Um, and it just has a very good sound to it. And then when you disengage, it kind of has a clickety clack as it disengages as it comes off of the detent ball or the lock bar or whatever, then off of the detent ball, then hits your nail, just has a little clickety clack and then very, very nice, crisp snick when it comes in, right? Um, this knife has amazing acoustics. It's one of the best acoustic knives in my collection. And uh, it's probably the best, I mean, I, I gotta check myself here. It's one of the best production knives in terms of acoustics. Um, that's something that custom makers seem to get right a lot is they just have these awesome acoustics to custom knives, right? Um, and this knife is up there with those. That's how good it is. So I really love the acoustics on this. So we've covered uh, aesthetics, ergos, cutting, carry, uh, and sounds. And pardon me if I'm going slow here, guys. I'm, you know, it's my first review after COVID. I've been down for over a week, so I got to get back into the into the groove here. Um, but action, guys. That's where this thing sings. That's where this thing shines. Um, that's why I love this knife as much as I do. I, I love the aesthetics. I love the sounds. I love the ergos. I love the cutting. All those things are great. Carry is definitely good. It's not great, but it's good. Um, but the action is just absolutely incredible on this knife. Um, so let's start with the deployment. It is the detent. We knives has absolutely crushed this detent. Um, finally guys, there's a Wii knife that I get that has the perfect detent on it. And I, I know at least like five other people with this knife, because once I got it, you know how I am guys. I loved it, so I started shouting from the rooftops um, that you need to get one. And I'm not saying I'm the reason all these people bought one, um, but a lot of people did get them like when I did or, or after I did. And I would always ask, how's that detent, right? How's that detent? You know me, uh, Detent Diva over here. And it is just money on, I think all the ones, I've never had somebody say their detent felt weak or too strong or whatever. So it seems like they really dialed it on this particular model. And when you go to deploy, 
it just absolutely flies out of there locks up with authority has that snick or that thwack sorry to it and it's just so satisfying to reverse flick this knife guys you can get your thumb in there and thumb flick it out so that's easy because of the detent again here's the reverse flick flies out of there now it also has a, t a front flipper which you know you think would be like an afterthought but the way they did the jimping which goes not all the way to the top and it doesn't curl around but it doesn't need it it just is perfect and that detent is just money for that front flip guys they they let this detent go i'm i'm impressed because usually on a knife like this with a front flipper they would have made it too weak like i had the um exploit which is a todd knife and tool designed by best tech same kind of concept right hole and a, a front flipper and they went too weak on the detents best tech they went too weak on the detent because of the front flipper and it really made the other deployments suffer right the front flip was okay but the reverse flick and the thumb flick weren't as good on this knife they dialed it for the flick and then they just made sure it worked for the front flip and it does it works beautifully some i don't think people know this or companies know this you don't have to have a light detent for a front flipper you just can't have a strong detent so you could have a medium detent and i'd say this one is probably medium to medium stiff like a medium well steak sort of right that's how i like to reference it and even with that i have no problem front flipping this honestly once it breaks it flies out there's none of that there's none of that shit where you like i can do it watch i could probably do it yeah there's none of this though where this happens to you like halfway through the flip right like this thing cracks out when it cracks out yeah that's a new saying crack out when you crack out baby um there's also this fuller that runs along the blade right here guys and you can get any finger you want in there middle finger flick I mean, if you want to get your pinky in there, you can pinky flack it. Um, it's just endlessly enjoyable to fidget with this knife. I sit there and I do all the different ones. And honestly, I have fun with every one of them. Obviously, the reverse flick is my jam. But I enjoy and feel satisfied by the thumb flick on this knife. I enjoy and feel satisfied by the uh, front flip on this knife. That's what makes it so good now you have the disengagement this lock bar is a masterpiece you see how they cut out that big old chamfer in there whatever you want to call that on the lock bar and there's just so much room in there it's all hollowed out it is incredible guys you just get your finger in there boom drops to your nail you gotta you gotta you know you gotta be willing to let it hit your nail you know um you could i guess push it and then like stick your finger in the hole so she said ride it down and then shake it right you could do that uh but i'm gonna let it drop and it has this sort of plunge you see where the plunge grind is and that little bump under the plunge grind is what hits your nail it's not an edge so it's not sharp that hits your nail it doesn't hurt this one's never hurt and then it just drops guys i mean the action on this has been incredible since day one I did take this apart and put skiff bearings in here. Um, I have no play. I have no uh, lock rock or anything. Do I have play? No. It's a freaking tank, guys. Um, and it's so smooth. It's not drop shut. I mean, we're talking about a three inch blade here, guys. I think maybe a three inch blade. So you're not, you know, it, you could maybe get it to drop shut, but with the good detent on this it's not going to because you have lock bar pressure from that awesome lock bar right um, but this is ultra smooth and one good shake and she's down the skiffs i will say they did maybe improve the action five ten percent and then uh, maybe add it they added a little bit of that pivot lateral strength to it didn't really need it guys i will say this is a knife that um did not need to come apart um the action out of the box was pretty much just like this. It might have just been ever so slightly less uh, smooth and, and less drop shut, but so little, guys. Um, for me, it's worth it. But for most people, just stick with the stock, you know. Um, 
it did go back together perfectly we're dead nut centered um so all is well in terms of that and i love the skiff bearing so it's it's good for me i love it but just saying not necessary or anything um so yeah i mean that's that's the we roxy three guys it, it's been a home run uh, it's been an absolute pleasure in the collection i i don't see it going anywhere i enjoy carrying this knife i love putting it in my pocket um yeah it's just a really cool knife and um yeah it's a home run todd knife and tool you killed it we knives i gotta give you props i give you shit a lot i give you lots of shit <laughs> um but this is a home run you guys absolutely stepped up to the plate and you freaking just locked in and you hit that change up and that motherfucker went Pa ping and uh, what's his name on oh, the All-Star game was going back, 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 gone. It's a home run. You guys killed it. Um, yeah. So that's it, guys. It's the Wee Roxy 3. Thank you for checking it out. Um, if you haven't, subscribe to the channel. You know, uh, there's a join button down there if you want to join the memberships. I also have Patreon. Um I love you guys. You know I love you guys. Thank you so much to anybody who reached out, um, wishing me well and and and, and getting better. And, and I'm still, you know, I'm not 100%, but I'm feeling good, guys. And it's like I can breathe again. Not, I didn't have issues breathing. I just mean like, I can, I can just like, you know, I feel a little bit better. Like a little bit of a weight has been lifted. So. Um, Thank you, guys. I love you. I hope you have an absolutely fantastic day, and I will catch you later.